Good afternoon. This is Derek Briggs. Okay, I'm here to give you some weekly wisdom. So, there was a question that was asked. Um, and the question was, how did Satan sin in heaven? And I thought this was a great question and it would make a a uh, a great teaching. I think it is profound for your woke. The bigger question is what is sin? Okay, what is sin? Because when you understand what sin is, then you will understand how Satan sinned in heaven. Ezekiel 28. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created until iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountains of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. So, O covering cherub, let you know that we're dealing with an angel. Satan is a cherub. Verse 17 says, Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. And I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. This story is about Lucifer's fall as that, that created cherub, that, that created being. This one, God's greatest creation. This cherub. He fell because of uh he sinned and he became satan all right so i think the reason why this question was asked how did satan sin in heaven or how was it possible for satan to sin in heaven the reason why that question is asked because i think that most people do not understand what sin is. They don't know what the, the definition of sin is. And what they will do is a lot of times they will use First uh, John 3 and 4, which says, whosoever committed sin transgressed also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. So people will say that that's the definition of sin. It says right there, if you transgress the law, that's sin. If this is the best definition of sin, it's saying that it requires the, the Mosaic law. And you need to transgress the Mosaic law in order for there to be sin. Now, what cancels that definition is found in, in uh, Romans 4 and 15. Because the law brings wrath, and where there is no law, there is no transgression. The Mosaic law came in with Moses and what the scripture is letting you know is that and where there is no law there is no transgression and this is going to take us to Romans 5 watch this for until the law sin was in the world but sin is not imputed when there is no law nevertheless death reigned from Adam to Moses even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. When we put these two scriptures together, watch this. 4 and 15 says, and where there is no law, law there is no transgression. And therefore, when you understand that, you can understand Romans 5, 13 says, for until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed where there, no, there is no law. So what this scripture, what the scripture is letting you know is that the sin, their sin was not charged to them because they didn't have a law. So the way that God, God operates is he always gives you a law. He gives you instructions and then he holds you accountable for the instructions that he gave you. Hold on to that. Okay, so this was saying the uh, Romans 5 and 13 says until the law came, they were not charged. Sin was not imputed because there was no law. And then you go to verse 14, which says, nevertheless. So therefore, death reigned from Adam to Moses, because when Moses comes, he's going to give the law. And now from the time that Moses gives the law, sin is going to be imputed.
But when you consider the fact that Lucifer was kicked out of heaven before this, hmm, then that means that something is wrong there. That wouldn't apply to him. That could not apply to him. Mm -hmm. Because, again, the law of Moses did not always exist. So what this means is that 1 John 3 and 4 would not be the best definition of sin. And see, the fact of the matter is that there are more scriptures which explain what sin is. Okay, watch when we, when we go to 1 John 5 and 17. All unrighteousness is sin, but all unrighteousness is sin. Then James 4 and 17 says, Therefore, to him that know it to do good, and do it it not, to him it is sin. So, unrighteousness is sin. When you know to do the right thing, to do good, and you don't do it, that's sin. Hmm. So, we, we've seen three scriptures that tell you what sin is. Three scriptures that tell you what sin is. James 4 and 17, to know to do good and do it is not a sin. 1 John 5 and 17, all unrighteousness is sin. And then 1 John 3 and 4, transgression of the law is sin. So which scripture is correct? That answer is all of them. The key of understanding the Bible is not to isolate a particular scripture and exclude everything else. Okay, just understand this. The key to understanding the Bible is to balance the scriptures. So what you do is you include all of the scriptures on the subject matter. And then you reconcile them. You make sense of it. Put them all together and make sense of it. A lot of times the difference is between the New Testament and Old Testament. And, and like I've said before, if you listen to my teachers, put Jesus in the middle of it. So the only reason why something no longer exists in the New Testament that existed in the Old Testament is because of Jesus. So by Jesus fulfilling what was in the Old Testament as a result he implemented what is to be in the New Testament. Let's get back to this sin thing. These these three uh, scriptures that are dealing with sin. There is also what is called the law of first mention. The law of first mention means that the first time something is introduced, that moment, that instance, sets precedent going forward. So you're going to define the rest of these instances based on what happened this first time. And when it comes down to sin, this is what we're going to use. Because remember, we had three different definitions of sin, right? And all of them are correct. So watch this. When we go to Genesis chapter 2, And the Lord commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But... Of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. So God told Adam, you could eat of every tree in the garden except this one tree. And if you eat of this one tree, then you will die. So what have we just read? First of all, let's understand this. Whatever God says is law whatever god says is law because he said it now what god is saying to adam is in the day you are disobedient to me you're going to die okay so wait a minute wait a minute, wait so this would mean that when adam was created he was created to live forever he was not supposed to die. Okay? Let's understand what we're reading. So God is saying that, but in the day that you disobey me, you will die. This is the reason that we die. We die because of what? For the wages of sin is death. Sin is disobedience to God. Sin equal disobedience to God. Let me flip it. Disobedience to God equals sin. 
In the day that you sin, you will surely die. In the day that you are disobedient to God, you will surely die. You see this? So for us, let me throw us in this. This is why in, in Romans 6 and 23, the other part of that says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Remember, Old Testament, New Testament, Christ is the filter. So in the Old Testament, because of sin, they died. Christ being the filter, new covenant, because of him, we have eternal life. So because of him, so man died, which led to him coming. And because he came and fulfilled his assignment, then everybody that's a part of the new covenant will live forever. So restoring us to God's original plan. Okay. Just hold on to that because that's the, that's the whole purpose. That's the whole story of the Bible. If you don't know the whole story of the Bible is, is one story, you know, uh, uh, 40 plus authors, uh, almost a 2000 year period. One story about Christ. This is a story about Christ coming to restore us to God's original plan to live forever. The gift of God is eternal life. Okay. And even when you start with Adam, it starts with Adam so that you can show a lineage of where Christ came from. That lineage of who he came through. Okay. All right. On my script, let's get back to this with Satan. How did Satan sin? Remember that sin is disobedience to God. So how did Lucifer sin? Okay, so let's go back to Ezekiel 28. Thou was perfect in all thy ways from the day that thou was created until iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence. And thou hadst sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up. Here we go. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom. Thy wisdom was corrupted because of thy heart was lifted up by reason of brightness. Therefore, I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee because of his heart being it corrupted his wisdom. Why? Because Proverbs 9 and 10 lets us know that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So this means that 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 Lucifer no longer feared God. It contaminated his wisdom. Proverbs 16 and 5. Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Because, see, what you have to understand is that there are spiritual principles that do not change. Why? Because God is not a man that he should lie. So when God says something, it becomes a law. You understand this? So even going back to when we when we see what happened with, 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 with Lucifer, we find out later on that this is an abomination. These are one of the things that God hates. Right? Because you have to fear God first and foremost above anything. He was created perfect. He was created perfect without iniquity. But because of his heart, because of the pride that was in him, because he was so beautiful, because he was so intelligent, he took it the wrong way. And he started thinking that, okay, you know what? I want to be as God. I want to be as the most high. I want to be worshipped as God is worshipped. You see, that's how he sinned. And so what God comes back and lets us know is that this wasn't exclusive to him, to Lucifer. This is one of the things that I hate. So even if you do what Lucifer did, then you're going to have the same consequences as Lucifer. Now watch this. Let me give you this, this information. Lucifer being an angel, angels, angelic beings, spiritual beings cannot die. Only man, this earth realm, dies, is eligible for death. That's why the way you send is death. However, 
when it comes down to Lucifer, who is this angel who cannot die. That's why his sentence is to be tormented forever. Because he cannot die. His sentence is to be tormented forever. And, and and let me let me look for this uh uh this scripture right quick. Uh because the the key in understanding is um because th this is why people will say I I've heard people say that uh they don't believe in an actual hell. Hell is on earth. This is hell, okay? So let me let me give you this let me give you this scripture. And many of them that sleep, we're talking about at, this is after death. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. At the judgment day, for those that, that are asleep, there's going to be two destinations. Everlasting life, live forever, John 3.16, or it's going to be everlasting contempt. That's when you're tormented day and night. You understand that? You're tormented day and night. So we need to, you know, someone has said, and, and someone has said before that, well, how can, if it's, it's, if it's fire, how can you not be consumed? If it was talking about a literal fire, Revelation 20 and 10 says, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beasts and the false prophets are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Okay, you see that? Tormented day and night forever and ever. It's a it's a never ending thing. So for the people that say that, well, if it's fire, how can they not be consumed? Do we have an example of that in the Bible? Sure we do. It's the burning bush. When God spoke to Moses out of the burning bush. And the, the fact, the, the thing that had Moses baffled was the fact that it was burning. This bush was burning, yet it wasn't, it wasn't consumed. It wasn't being destroyed. This is a, an actual thing that's going to happen. That they're going to be tormented day and night, like not just fire and then it's over. No. From the time we entered the earth room, we became physical beings. Okay. Spiritual beings cannot die, right? Only the physical beings die. So when we go back to this spiritual realm, we all become spiritual. It's impossible to die. When you understand exactly what sin is, disobedience to God, because there are things that, that God can tell you to do that is not written in the Ten Commandments, that are not in the Mosaic Law, that are not in the, the commandments of Jesus. But if God tells you to do such and such, and it doesn't matter what God can say, I need you to pray for the next 30 days at 12 o'clock. If you do not pray for the next 30 days at 12 o'clock, then you are in sin. That means that if you pray 30 days at 11 o'clock, you are still in sin. You can't bargain with God and say, okay, well, I ain't going to do it at 12. But I tell you what, I'll do it at 11. Well, you know what? I'm not going to do 30 days because 30 days is, you know, that's a long time. So I'm going to do it for a week. You're still in sin. God can tell you, hey, there is a person, this person that's at the store that's asking for whatever. Give them, they're asking for $10, give them $20. If they ask for 10 and you give them 10, but God said give them 20, it's sin. You see, it's, it's that simple. So sin is disobedience to God. So a lot of people are going to miss heaven because of their disobedience. This book that we follow, the Bible, are instructions. But in those instructions are examples for us to learn from. But they're not the only instructions for us these are not the only things these things that were written for our learning these are not the only things that we should follow as 
a member of the body, as a son of God. These are not the only things that we should follow. We ought to be obedient to whatever is told to us.